On Thursday the 8th of August, officers were made aware of a vehicle of interest in the Lem Lane area of Gateshead. To stopping the car, the driver, Matthew Bello, assaulted an officer with a machete causing injury to his arm. The offender fled the scene but was swiftly arrested. He was originally charged with attempted murder. At Newcastle Crown Court, he pleaded guilty to the lesser offence of wounding with intent. He also admitted having a bladed article and dangerous driving. The charge of attempted murder will no longer be taken forward. The 50-year-old of no fixed abode was remanded in custody and is due to appear in the same court for sentencing in January. Assistant Chief Constable Deborah Alderson of Northumbria Police said, This was a shocking attack on one of our dedicated officers and they showed incredible bravery in extremely challenging circumstances. I am pleased the individual responsible has been brought to justice for their completely unacceptable actions. Thankfully, the officer is now back at work, once again protecting the wonderful communities we serve. She added, and every day our officers and staff and volunteers come to work to make a positive difference to people's lives. They know this may mean putting themselves in harm's way to protect others, but we want to be clear violence against them will not be tolerated. We are extremely grateful for the support we do receive from the overwhelming majority of people we serve. Please know this is never taken for granted and it really does mean a great deal. Dealing duo who conspired to supply cocaine and cannabis across the North East have been jailed for a combined total of 27 years. Michael Falcus and Michael Rice worked together to profit from the illicit trade of Class A and Class B substances between March and June 2020. Pair attempted to mask their offending through their use of EncroChat encrypted messaging, but they soon became the focus of an investigation from specialist officers working as part of Operation Venetic. It soon emerged that Mr. Falcus organised deliveries of both cocaine and cannabis into the region, with Mr. Rice working as his trusted man by storing cocaine and cash acting as a courier. The investigation found the pair coordinated the supply of 12 kilos of cocaine kilos of cannabis, with a combined value in excess of £400,000. Both men were arrested on suspicion of conspiracy to supply Class A drugs in April 2021, with searches conducted at their home addresses. Mr. Falcus, 55 of Manor Drive, Benton, was charged with one count of conspiracy to Class A drugs and one count of conspiracy to supply Class B drugs. Mr. Rice, 59 of Harriet Street, Bladen, was charged with one count of conspiracy to supply cocaine and one count of conspiracy to supply cannabis. The men were found guilty by a jury on all charges at Newcastle Crown Court in August and appeared before the same court on Friday for sentencing. Mr. Falcus was jailed for 17 years whilst Mr. Rice was handed a 10-year term behind bars. Following sentencing, Detective Chief Inspector Mark Michael for Northumbria Police said, This is a superb result and I'd like to thank the tireless work of the officers. Mr. Falcus in particular was a prominent figure within the organised criminal network which sought to profit from the trade of destructive substances which wreak such devastating consequences in our communities. These lengthy sentences mark the latest success for Operation Sentinel, our dedicated initiative to tackling serious and organised crime in the North East. The money earned from the most vulnerable members in our communities is often reinvested into further criminal enterprises and this is why it is crucial for members of the public to continue supporting our inquiries. The killer of Sunderland woman Melissa Eastick has been handed a life sentence after she sustained more than 100 injuries at his hands. Stephen Todd dialed 999 around 7am on Tuesday, October the 17th, 2023, to report he had found Melissa unresponsive inside his address on Stockton Terrace in Grangetown. Emergency services attended where, sadly, the 36-year-old was pronounced dead at the scene and Mr. Todd was arrested. Inquiries by the force's major investigation team revealed Melissa had suffered more than 100 injuries, including including bruises, cigarette burns and fractures. A trawl of the CCTV led detectives to uncover holes in Mr. Todd's account, including footage of him buying two bottles of alcohol when Melissa would have been likely unconscious or dead. Mr. Todd, now 41, also claimed to paramedics upon arrival that she seemed alright yesterday, despite the pair's last sighting together being more than two weeks earlier. Mr. Todd was also charged with Melissa's murder earlier this year and denied the offence. Last month, he went on trial at Newcastle Crown Court 
but pleaded guilty to the murder on the third day. Mr Todd of Buttermere Street, Sunderland appeared before the same court where he was handed a life sentence with a minimum term of 21 years and 4 months in prison. In a victim impact statement from Melissa's family, they spoke of their pain of losing a sister, a mother, an auntie and a much loved member of their family. While she had a hard childhood, they said she was bubbly, friendly and got on with anyone. Her family said when Melissa started a relationship with Mr Todd, they felt like they had lost her and struggled to make contact or know where she was. Despite this, Melissa had been spotted in July last year while Mr Todd was in prison for assaulting her, with her family saying she seemed happy. However, a few months later, they were all left shocked and devastated after finding out from police that Melissa had likely been murdered. They said, We felt so sorry for her having had a bad start in life and that it continued throughout her life. As a family, we have all tried our best to tell her we love her and try to get her back on track, but she'd always find her way back to Mr. Todd. We are now traumatised by this and wished we'd done more. Melissa was a much loved member of our family who was taken too soon. Senior Investigating Detective Chief Inspector Louise Jenkins of Northumbria Police said, Our thoughts remain with Melissa's loved ones as they continue to come to terms with their loss. While nothing can bring back Melissa, I do hope the sentencing handed down today brings her family a sense of closure knowing that Mr Todd is behind bars for a significant period. Detective Chief Inspector Jenkins added, Domestic abuse, no matter the form it takes, is completely unacceptable and we are committed to putting perpetrators before the court. If any part of this case sounds familiar to you or someone you know, we would urge you to seek support at the earliest opportunity. For anyone who has concerns over a partner, the partner of a friend or family member who may have a history of violence, Claire's law can be used to check the person's background. Officers can check their record to help people make an informed decision about their relationship and escape if necessary. The service is 100% confidential and no one will ever know that the applicant as applied for the information. A doctor who admitted trying to murder his mother's then partner by poisoning him at a fake medical appointment has been sentenced to more than 30 years in prison. Thomas Guan, 53, sent bogus medical letters to the man claiming he was due to have an injection. Mr Quan arranged to visit the man at his Newcastle home on January the 22nd and wore a disguise including a wig and fake facial hair along with a medical mask so that his mother and her partner who was in his 70s wouldn't be able to recognize him. In the hours after receiving the injection the victim became seriously unwell developing a serious skin condition around the injection area. He was later admitted to hospital after visiting his GP. On presenting several letters for the medical appointment at which he was given the injections hospital staff discovered they were bogus and informed Northumbria police. The victim has since had to have numerous operations to repair the extensive damage the poisoning caused. He has been left with life-changing injuries. Part of the police investigation, Mr Kwan was identified as having driven from his home in the Ingleby Barwick area of Stockton to a hotel in Newcastle city centre in the early hours of January the 22nd before the appointment. Officers uncovered that Mr Kwan had used fake license plates on his vehicle during the journey to Tyneside. Mr Mr Kwan was arrested at his home and subsequently found on his computer was a poisoner's handbook and a book on guidance for murder investigations. Several files regarding poisons to kill a person and ideal poisons to use to invade detection were also uncovered on his computer. Further inquiries found that Mr Kwan had installed spying software on his mother's computer as a way of monitoring her and her then partner's computer usage for a period of over a year. He was then charged with attempted murder and causing grievous bodily harm with intent. He pleaded not guilty to these offences but did admit a charge of administering a noxious substance. Earlier this month he went on trial at Newcastle Crown Court over the attempted murder charge. On the second full day of the trial on Monday October the 7th he pleaded guilty to the offence. Mr Kwan of Bradding Court, Ingleby Barwick was remanded in custody following his guilty plea. When he was brought back to the court, he was sentenced to 31 years and 5 months in prison. Following the hearing, the officer in charge of the case, Detective Chief Inspector Jason Henry of Northumbria Police said, I'd like to take this opportunity to reiterate our praise for the victim in this case. We are extremely grateful to him for his cooperation throughout our complex investigation and hope now the man who poisoned him been jailed, he can begin to move on with his life. Detective Chief Inspector 
Henry added, Thomas Quan spent time maliciously planning how he would carry out this offence and cover his tracks. However, thanks to the assistance of the victim and the witness, and the hard work of the dedicated officers, we managed to piece together what happened, ensuring he was brought to justice. A predatory former postman has been found guilty of a series of heinous offences in Northumberland. Michael Stewart abused his position to target five women. The extent of Mr Stewart's offending came to light after one of his victims came forward to the police in November 2021 and the force's safeguarding department launched a full investigation. Mr Stewart, now 62, was arrested and later charged with 10 counts, 3 counts of exposure and 1 count of harassment with fear of violence. Mr Stewart of Windsor Terror Amble denied the offences but on Thursday was found guilty by a jury of eight of the ten counts and all of the charges following a nine-day trial at Newcastle Crown Court. He's been remanded in custody and is due to be sentenced in the same court in February next year. Leading the investigation, Detective Constable and Gawley of Northumbria Police said, Michael Stewart is a calculating predator who abused his position and subjected the victims to a horrific ordeal. The incredible bravery and strength shown by those abused to come forward and report these crimes means he now has been brought to justice. Tragically, two of his victims died before seeing this. Committed to supporting all victims of offences and putting offenders before the courts. Urge anyone who has been a victim, regardless of when the offences took place, to come forward. Our message is clear. We are here for you. Pub landlord who attempted to flee the country after admitting his role in a cocaine conspiracy has been jailed. David Falcus used the handle NovaGhost on the encrypted messaging app to facilitate the supply of Class A substance into the region. Specialist officers with Northumbria Police working as part of Operation Venetic uncovered messages sent by Mr Falcus between March and June 2020. The investigation found the 52-year-old was involved in the supply of more than 2 kilos of cocaine across the three-month period. Mr Falcus of Bede Close, Holystone, was arrested in February 2021 and searches of his home, address and business premises were conducted. More than £2,000 in cash was recovered from Mr Falcus's home, with a further 4,600 found at his place of work, along with six cocaine packages worth more than £4,000. He initially denied any wrongdoing but was subsequently charged with conspiracy to supply cocaine and released on conditional bail after his first court appearance. Mr Falcus later attempted to flee the country with a flight book to Bahrain by officers and arrested at Heathrow Airport on July the 24th this year. Within a week, he pleaded guilty to the drug charge at Newcastle Crown Court and appeared at the same court on Friday where he was sentenced to an eight-year term behind bars. Speaking after sentencing, Detective Chief Inspector Inspector Mark Michael of Northumbria Police said, Cocaine is an incredibly addictive and destructive substance which has absolutely no place in any of our communities. Organised crime of this nature brings with it violence, exploitation and the harm which will not be tolerated. Mr Falcons knew the damaging consequences of his actions, yet believed he was above the law and sought to profit from the trade of the drugs. He attempted to mask his offending through the use of a cryptic messaging, but dedication and teamwork of our officers ultimately led to him having no choice but to admit his guilt. The North East is no safe haven for drug dealers and this sentencing is the latest positive result in our ongoing clampdown against organised crime, Operation Sentinel. We would urge members of the public to continue to support us by reporting any concerns over criminality they may have, no matter how insignificant it may seem. Two drug dealers who were caught with almost £1 million worth of illegal substances have been jailed for almost 20 years. Associates Burham Tatar and Husha Mandaki appeared at Newcastle Crown Court on Monday where they were sentenced for their roles in Class A collusion, which has already seen one of their accomplices jailed. The duo were caught by officers after travelling from London to Newcastle in possession of large quantities of heroin. After arriving in the northeast, the pair drove to Tuffield area of Newcastle, where they met up with associate Kevin Hardacre. Mr Hardacre was subsequently stopped by officers after being stopped driving away from the scene, whilst Mr Tatar and Mr Mandaki were arrested after entering a nearby property. A 
search of Mr. Hardacre's and the associated property saw officers recover 19.5 kilograms of high purity heroin with an estimated street value of £925,000. Part of the investigation, which ran during 2022, officers with Northumbria Police established that all three men had been involved in conspiracy to supply the illicit substances. They were sentenced as followed Mr. Tatar, 43 of Ho Street, Plymouth, was sentenced to 11 years in prison for the supply of Class A drugs. Mr. Mandaki, 39 of Blackdon Close, Newcastle, was sentenced to 8 years and 9 months in prison for the supply of Class A drugs. Kevin Hardacre, 46, of William Street, Rochdale, was previously sentenced to 56 months in prison in December 2022 to being found guilty of supplying Class A drugs. Speaking after sentencing, Detective Chief Inspector Mark Michael said, Organised crime groups such as these bring misery into our neighbourhoods by selling this highly addictive illicit substance which is well known to destroy communities and ruin people's lives. This group of men were supplying large amounts of very pure heroin and travelled a long way as a part of their plot to distribute it into our communities. Mr Mandaki and Mr Tatar knew exactly what they were doing and the severity of their offending is reflected in the sentences handed down. This has been a very long and complex investigation and I would like to thank those officers and staff as well as our criminal justice partners who have helped secure the right result supporting our purpose of keeping people safe and fighting crime. Detective Chief Inspector Michael added, with the sentences handed down today, this brings the total to almost 20 years in prison for this trio, which is undoubtedly what they deserve. Part of Operation Sentinel, we will continue to clamp down on organised crime and we would ask communities to continue to work with us, reporting suspicious activity and sharing your concerns.